Hello, my name is Patrick. I'm the minister and the pastor of the Touch of God ministry. I welcome to this preaching teaching video and I believe today you're gonna have an encounter with God. You're gonna be healed, saved, delivered and that the power of the wonderful, beautiful Holy Spirit will touch you, heal you, deliver you in Jesus' name. So, so let's get started. Uh, so today the Lord put in my spirit to talk about why we have to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why we have to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ is very important and we're going to go deep into it and give you understanding and revelation and I believe as I preach and teach this word you're going to understand more why it's very important because if we don't people could go to hell. Okay, and God doesn't want anyone to pass, but all to come to the knowledge of who he is. But also he needs servants. He needs people who are willing and obedient, who are willing to go out there, win the lost, preach the gospel to different type of people. Okay, different type of cultures. Amen. Let's begin. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> anoint every ear to hear, anoint every heart to receive. Father, let your word go deep into their heart. I invite the Holy Spirit to, to, to fall, afresh, fall afresh upon everyone who's listening to this, who everyone understand my voice in the name of Jesus. Lord, even now, fall afresh upon everyone here and touch them, heal them, deliver them in the name of Jesus. Hello. So yeah, so why we have to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ? We preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to demonstrate the love of God to the world. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, He gave His own begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him should not perish, <clears throat> but have everlasting life. God demonstrated His love for the world by sending His Son, His wonderful Son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for us, for our sins. Because sin has separated mankind. But God so loved us, He sent His own begotten Son Okay, he demonstrated his love. So when we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, we're demonstrating the, the love of God to people. We're saying, hey, you know what? I know you're going through a lot of stuff, but just to let you know, Jesus Christ loves you. He has a plan for you. Okay, if you give your life to Jesus Christ, he'll heal you. He'll deliver you. He'll set you free. Okay, so it's very important to go out there and let people know Jesus Christ loved them. He wants to heal them. He wants to deliver them. He wants to set them free. He wants to pour out his love, his joy, his peace in their heart so they could experience the tangible presence and the power of God. 1 John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. Anyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his own begotten son into the world that we might live through him in this in this love not that we love God but he he loved us so he loved us first okay and sent his son to be propitiation for our sin beloved if God so loves us we ought to love one another so he's saying that God so loved you so much he gave his own in beautiful son to to die on a cross to shed his blood for you because that was God, was God demonstrating his love towards you towards the world towards you and towards the world okay and I know sometimes people in the world will say well you know did God well, you know did he die for this group of people this the whole world the whole world the whole world okay not just from one color different color ethnicity no for the whole world that's why, that's why we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere we go, all around the world, to let people know that Jesus Christ loved them, has a plan for them. He wants to love you. He wants to pour his love in you. And the reason why we need that love The only thing you could take you with you to heaven is souls, okay? Because we want to take as much people to heaven with us. So as we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, as we let people know that Jesus loved them, has a plan for them, okay? As we let them know, we're, we're not just, oh, come here and join a religion or a faith. No, we're preparing them so they could go and be with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Philippians 3, 17, 21. Brethren, join the fellow in my example. Note that those who walk as you have, have us 
for a pattern for many walk whom I have told you often now tell you even weeping that they are and they are enemies of the cross those, those whose end is destruction whose God is their belly whose glory is in their shame who set their mind on earthly things for our citizenship your citizenship my citizenship when you give your life to Jesus Christ you get a new citizenship okay if you come to a country you live there for a while you know some countries will allow you to to become a citizen of that country okay well when you give your life to Jesus Christ your citizenship was given you were stamped with a citizenship and your citizenship is in heaven for our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly await for the Savior our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who will transform our lowly body he'll give us you he'll give you a glorified body to be conformed to this glorious body according to a work which able to even to do all things so he's gonna he's not just you're not just when you give your life to jesus christ and when you go to be with him he's you're not just gonna well, i'm going in heaven you're gonna get a glorified body there are things that god is gonna give you okay not just you know not just not just oh, i feel the anointing You'll get victory on the earth. You have love on the earth. God will give you so much more. He wants to love you. He wants to pour his love, his peace into your heart. This is not the end. This is only the beginning. Let release whatever burden in your heart to God. And he'll let you heal you. He'll deliver you. He'll set you free. It is not your burden. It is not your burden. It is God. And give your life to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. He don't care where you come from. He don't care what ethnicity, what color. God loves you. So give your life to Jesus Christ. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Amen. John 14, 1, 6. Let let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mentioned. If it were not so, it would, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come. I will come again, receive you to myself. That where I am, there also may you may also be. Where I go, that the, where I go, you, there you may also. And where I go you know and then you know the way thomas said lord we don't know the way you're going how can we know the way jesus said i am the way the truth the life no one come to our heavenly father except through jesus so there, i know there's a lot of faith out there or you know different belief system but remember this if you want access to our heavenly father you gotta come through our lord and savior jesus christ that bible says that so people say, oh, I believe in this, I believe in that. No, they, ha they don't have access. The people of the world of different religions do not have access to God. There's only one way to access God, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why we preach the gospel to, of Jesus Christ to, to the world, to let them know Jesus loved them, has a plan, so they can receive access to the Father. And, and another, another reason why we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't want people to go to hell. We want people to go to heaven, but we don't want people to go to hell. Hell is a place of torment. Hell is a place of damnation. Hell is a place of destruction. Luke 16, 19, 31. This is talking about the rich man and Lazarus. Jesus said, there was a certain rich man who was splendid clothed in purple and fine linen who lived, lived each day in luxury. At his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus who was covered with sore. As Lazarus lay there longing for scrap from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick up his wound, look up, lick up, lick his open sores. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angel to sit beside Abraham at the heavenly banquet. The rich man also died and was buried. He went to the place of dead hell. There, in torment, he saw Abraham in far then then there in torment he saw abraham in the far distant with lazarus at his bed at at his side the rich man shouted father abraham have pity send lazarus over here to dip to to dip the tip of his finger into water and cool my tongue i'm in anguish in flame but abraham said son remember that during the life during your lifetime you had everything you wanted and lazarus had nothing and remember that point, he said everything. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, what if the man, a man gained the whole world but lose his soul? There are people out there who have everything in the world, 
They could travel where they could go to to if they tomorrow they said, oh, I want to go to they want to go to Africa or they, they, they the plane will be prepared within less than an hour and they go to whatever they want. They have many entry point, passport, private plane, yachts, all those type. They, you know, they could do eat all the type of food and be with whoever they want. But they get in. The Bible said you could gain all that and lose your soul. And notice, it's not that God is a, he's not against being rich or having money. He wants us to have the good things of life. But he wants our life. He wants us to give our life to Jesus Christ. He wants, the Bible said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his rights. All these other things will be added. So as we seek God first, those things, the yacht, the car, the wife, the husband, all those things will be given to us. But if we're seeking those things out, then we end up losing, we can end up losing our salvation. And that's what with this person. He got the whole thing. He lived in luxury and splendor. But then when it was time, he went to hell. The rich man said, Oh, Father, have pity. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger into water and cool my tongue. I'm in anguish in these flames. But Abraham said, said to him, Son, remember that during, during your lifetime you had everything you wanted and Lazarus had nothing. So now he is here doing, being comforted. You are in anguish. And besides, there is a great chasm separating separating us. No one can cross over to, to you or from here. No one can cross over to us from here. Then the rich man said, Please, Father Abraham, at least send him to my father's home, for I have five brothers, and I want him to warn them so they don't end up in this place of torment. But Abraham said, Moses and the prophet has warned them. Your brothers can read what they wrote. The rich man replied, No, Father Abraham, but if someone is sent, to them from the dead they will repent of their sin and turn up turn to God but Abraham said if they won't listen to Moses and the prophet they won't be persuaded even if someone rise from the dead and when he says rise from the dead he's talking about Jesus so this the rich man now became an evangelist because now he he's experiencing hell and I say this right now the decision you make the decision for heaven and hell is made now it's not made after that's why you see that, you know, why he, right now all of a sudden he realized, oh, oh my God, this is going to be forever? Yeah. Once, once a person to step into a place of hell, it is no joke. I pray that, I, I, don't, I wouldn't pray hell for my friends, enemies, no one. Because hell is forever being tormented. And that's why we persuade men. We preach and teach the gospel. We let people know that Jesus Christ loved them. He has a plan for them. He doesn't want them to go to a lost eternity. The things of the world, one of the things you got to read, the things of the world, the, the Satan used the things of the world to blind people, Okay. The, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. John, 1 John 2, 16. For all that, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life is not of the Father. The enemy used the desire of the world to blind people so that they don't hear or understand the gospel. The, the people of the world are after wanting the nice body, the nice women, the nice men, the nice car. They're after the, the natural things of the world. But all that is a deception to blind them. Why? Because then the gospel, then they, be, they become blind to the gospel. John 12, 40. He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart. Least they should see with their eyes and least they should understand with their heart in turn so that they should be healed. Okay? And again, Matthew 16, 26. What profit, for what profit is it to a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul you know the, the many people they go after the things of the world they are deceived by the enemy oh i want the nice family okay they get the family oh i want the nice car i want the house they have all the things and all that deceive them and then one day it's time for them to to die and they're like oh you know and then they're shocked 
because they never, they, they never made a decision on the earth to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's why I said today is a day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not 10 days from now, not when you're perfect. If, if you go to a church and they tell you, oh, no, you got to fix your hair or brush your teeth to give you, to give your life to Jesus, they, are, they have their father devil. Anyone can confess Jesus Christ and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior today. And I'm going to give you the opportunity right after this uh, preaching to give your life to Jesus Christ. Because why? God so loved the world. He, did not, he, he gave His only begotten Son. So it is your job to receive that love today. That's the sin of the world, the sin of Adam, the sin of the world is the thing that separates mankind from God. Romans 6, 23. For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Isaiah 59, 2. It is, it is your sin that have cut you off from God. So you got to understand that, that sin, sin, the wage of sin, the sin of Adam, the sin of mankind is the thing that separate you and I from God, those who have not given their life to Jesus. But Jesus Christ gave, shed his blood and the blood of Jesus Christ wash your sins away. There's power in the blood of Jesus Christ, power to cleanse all your sins. 1 John 1 7 but if we walk in the light as he is in light we fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse us from all sin from your sin so when you give your life to Jesus you, the blood come and wash your sins away Hebrew 9 2 2, 2. And almost all things are by the, by the Lord purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ, there is no remission of sin. And Romans 3, 23, 26. For everyone who has sinned, we all fall short of God's glory standard. Okay? Everyone, everyone in the world. So if anyone in other faith, okay, they all, you know, this guy believed, he believed in some tree. You know, he must be holy. No, he's a sinner. Un until he give his life to Jesus Christ, that man is a sinner. I don't care if he's the holiest of holies. If he does not, you know, and I, and like even those who practice certain faith, if they don't give their life to Jesus Christ, they're sinners. How? Because the blood, the blood, and there's only one blood. You've got to understand. The blood of animals cannot wash your sins away. The blood of mankind cannot wash your sins. The blood of Jesus Christ will wash your sins away. The blood of Jesus has power. Power to heal. Power to deliver. I plead the blood of Jesus over your family. I plead the blood of Jesus over you right now. The blood of Jesus Christ come upon you right now and wash you. And wash you. Cleanse you. Protect you. The enemy cannot touch you when you're under the blood. He cannot touch you when you're in the blood. He cannot the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ come upon you. Whew. I love you. I love the blood of Jesus Christ. I love Jesus Christ. Yet for for yet God in his grace freely make us right in, in his sight. He did this through Jesus Christ when he freed us from the penalty of our sin. For God presented Jesus Christ as as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus Christ sacrificed his life, shed his blood. This sacrifice showed that God was not was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in the past. For he was looking ahead, include them in what he would do in the present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just. He made sinners right in sight when they believe in Jesus Christ. So when you give your life to Jesus Christ, when you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the blood of Jesus Christ come to wash your past sins away. Okay? If you do anything after that, you could ask God for forgiveness, he'll forgive you. But from that day, the day you give your life to Jesus Christ, your past sins are washed away. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then all those who, who now, now every believer, it is every believer's right to preach the gospel, to let people know that Jesus Christ loved them. Oh, but I'm not an avenger. God didn't call you to be an... If he, even if he did call you, whether he called you or not, 
okay? God is not just, oh, let the evangelists go out and preach the gospel. He wants every believer to go out and let people know that Jesus Christ died for them, has a plan for them. He wants every believer. So it's our right, it's your responsibility, it's my responsibility, it's your responsibility to preach the gospel, to let people know that Jesus Christ died for them, has a plan for them. 2 Corinthians 5, 11, 21. We are called into a ministry of reconciliation. Knowing that there is the, knowing that, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade mankind, but we all know, we are all known to God and also trust well known to your conscience. For we do not condemn ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on your behalf that you may have answers for those who boast in the appearance and not in heart. For if you are beside yourself, it is for God. If we are, if, if, for if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compel us. The love of Jesus Christ will compel you as you get filled with his love to compel you to help to love and minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to many people. Because he judged, he judged us. Thus, if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all of us so that who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them. And it was again, therefore, now on, we, re we regard no one according to the flesh, though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus, thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things has passed away, and before all things have become new. So when you give your life to this question, all things are passed away. All things, okay, once you give your life to this question, everything of your past is washed away. You become a new creation when you give your life to Jesus Christ. Now all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was, was in Christ, Jesus Christ, reconciled the world to himself. Okay, Not imputing their trespass to them. He committed to us the word reconciliation, bringing people back. We reconcile our differences. That's what reconciliation is. Now, when we are um, now, now then we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you in Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God, for He made Him who knew no sin. That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ had no sin to become sin. Jesus Christ, when He died on the cross, He took all your sins. So that you might become righteous. So I and you, all who give our life to Jesus, might have right standing with God. And that's why 2 Timothy 4, 5 says, Be watchful in all things, endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Okay, go out there. Let people know about Jesus Christ. Preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Love upon people. Homeless, black, it doesn't matter who they are. Let them know that Jesus Christ died for them. Let your family know. Let your friend know. Let them know that Jesus Christ loved them. Now, I'm going to go into several tools that you could use to preach the gospel, okay? To let people know. The first tool, okay? The first tool to evangelize people is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. God loves you. God want, God gave his son for you. He doesn't want you to suffer, deal with pain, hurt, or anything in the world. He wants you to give your life to Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ is good news, not bad news. Please remember that. When people say, oh, you know, there are certain people who like to bring, who like to preach condemnation. Oh, this world is all bad. They're all going to burn in hell. Yeah, well, you don't, need, you don't need a prophet to tell you that the world is bad. But... We have to still preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mark 16, 14, 18. Later he appeared to them at 11 and sat at, uh, they sat at the table. He rebuked their unbelief and hardened so because they did not believe those who have seen him after he has set, risen. He said to them, go to all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and baptizes will be saved. But he who does not will be condemned. So condemnation is those who don't receive Jesus Christ. But our job is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to people. And 2 Peter 3 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but he is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should pass, but all to come to the t knowledge of who he is, all to come to repentance. 
So that's the first one. We preach the gospel, okay? That's the first tool. We preach the gospel, okay? Second tool to use in preaching the gospel is praying. You pray. Pray for those. If you're going out there, I'm going to go out there to, the, to this community. Pray and ask God to, to, to help you. As you pray for those people, you're going to go out there. God give you opportunity. God open doors, open their heart so that they could receive Jesus Christ basically praying make it easier let's put it that way okay if you're doing it in the flesh you're trying to convince people someone would and you know and bobby give your life and they're fighting you then you're not praying you need to pray that god will soften bobby susie anyone's heart to the gospel of jesus christ that they can receive jesus christ as the lord and savior first timothy 2 1 6 therefore i exalt i exalt first all the uh, Therefore, I exalt, first of all, the supplication, prayer, intercession, giving thanks to be made for all men, for kings, for all who are in authority, that they may be led, that, they, that, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is God acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desire all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, one mediator between God and man, and the man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So that's why we pray for our neighbors. We pray for our family. We pray as we go out there to preach the gospel. We pray for them. Oh, Father, as I go speak to my dad, speak to my mom, speak to my brother, speak to uh, my neighbors. I pray that you open the door. You soften their heart that they could know the Lord Jesus Christ. When I talk to them about Jesus Christ, they'll be acceptive. They'll be receptive to Jesus Christ. And when, we, when, when, they, when they do give their life to Jesus Christ, Colossians 1.13, He has delivered us from the power of darkness. They'll be delivered from the power of darkness and, and, come, and, and transfer us into the kingdom of the Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Number three tool. In, in getting people saved, okay, evangelizing, okay, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ is using the word, the word of the living God, the wonderful word of God, okay? The word of God is very important. Romans 10, 8, 11. What does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach that if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For with the heart, one believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believe on him will not be put to shame. So this is the scripture. If we confess, if you confess Jesus Christ, our job is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. As we preach the gospel, when someone say, okay, I want to receive Jesus, confess, repeat after him, dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. I believe you're coming back for me. It is we letting them confess that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, that, they, that Jesus Christ died for them, okay? And that Jesus Christ is coming back again for them and that Jesus Christ is, has forgiven them of their sin. And, the, and Romans 10, 13 says, Whoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if anyone who cry out to God, Oh, Heavenly Father, I want to be saved. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. That's confession. Father, I, I, I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. He's coming back again for me. They're crying out to God. And because they cry to God, they're giving their life to Jesus Christ. And, not, and remember, God the Father through Jesus Christ. And the, the last tool, okay, to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, get under the Holy Spirit. Get under the power of the Holy Spirit. Ask God to anoint you with the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible said, not by my, not by power, by my spirit, save the Lord. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. You cannot do it in your flesh. That's why you say, you know, yes, you pray, yes, and then you, you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, the word of God, okay? But you need to get under the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 1, 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be a witness to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria to the end of the earth, 
okay? So you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. Power to enable you to preach the gospel. Power to demonstrate the things of God. Power to show for the glory and the power of God. I feel that power. <laughs> Acts 2, 1, 4. When the day of Pentecost fully come, they all with one accord in one place, and suddenly came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty when it filled the whole house they were sitting. And then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. So in the day of Pentecost, once, uh, once the Holy Spirit came, okay, from 120 to 3,000 people got, got saved. They received the power and 3, 000, from 120, 3,000 people got saved. And then Acts 4, 29, 31. Now, Lord, hear their threat and give us your servant with great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May, may miraculous signs and one be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And after they prayed that, prayed after this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they pararo sukarando kuro suturo di karanda rararando kuro sutuko rapata para to kuro sutuko na gamande kiri kuro suto yemarando kundi karanda maro kura ramanda de kura ramlo na ramlo na para ni kuro ni rapa ba 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 rapa ba 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 rapa ba ba rapa ba 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 ha 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 ho ho. Thank you, Father. Even now that you are baptizing. Everyone afresh with the Holy Ghost on the side of us. I release a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost from the top of the head to the soles of it. A fresh baptize of the Holy Ghost. Baptize everyone here on the side of us with the Holy Ghost and fire in Jesus' name. <laughs> I feel the Holy Ghost and and we see the evidence in uh, Acts 8 26 10 28 Acts 8 26 40 now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying arise go towards the south along the road which go down from Jerusalem to Gaza this is the desert so he arose and went and behold a man of um, behold a man of Ethiopian an eunuch of great authority under uh, Candace, the queen of Ethiopia, who had charge of the, all her treasury, had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. He was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, said to Philip, Go near and overtake his chariot. So Philip ran to him, and I heard him reading the prophet Isaiah said, Do you understand what you're reading? He said, How can I understand unless someone guides me? He asked Philip, "Come up and sit, sit with him." And the place in the script, and the place in the scriptures which he read, he was able. He was led. The place in the scripture which he read was this: He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and he, you know he was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shear is silent. So he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, injustice was taken away from who. For who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered, Philip, I ask you, um, whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began to begin at the scriptures preaching Jesus. You see, he preached Jesus. Okay. To him. Now as they went down the road, they came to a water. And the eunuch said, see here in the water, what hindered me from being baptized? Okay. Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. He answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Oh, glory to God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water he, and he baptized them. And now when they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away to the eunuch to, away. So the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing but Philip was found at Azota passing through he preaching all preaching in all the cities till he came to Caesarea praise the Lord hallelujah so the Holy Spirit came upon Philip spoke to him tell him go here go there do you know to the Holy Spirit was leading Philip to get people saved 
in the Holy Spirit, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to do that for you. That he's going to lead you this week. He's going to say, Patrick, go talk to this person here. Uh, you, go talk to this person here. Because the Holy Spirit knows the right people who are ready to be saved. I love the Holy Spirit. I love the Holy Spirit. And you should love the Holy Spirit. He's your helper. And he can help you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to more people. That's why I always tell people, get baptized. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. I felt that one. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So pray and ask God to use you in in the power of the Holy Spirit, but also pray and ask God to use you in the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. There are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, and those gifts could be used as evangelism tools, okay? There's the Holy Spirit, but there's the gifts of the Holy Spirit to evangelize people. 1 Corinthians 14, 24, 25. But if we, if we, but if all of you were prophesying, unbeliever or people who don't understand these things come into your meeting, they will com- com- be convicted of sin, mm-hmm. Judge and and judge by what you say, and then they, as they listen, the secret of their uh, the secret thought will be exposed, and they'll fall to their knee, worshiping God, declaring God is truly here among you. So, and there's there's there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. There are gifts that reveal something: word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discernment of spirit. There are gifts that the there are gifts that do something: faith, healing. Work your miracle. There are gifts that say something, prophecy, different kinds of things, interpretation of tongue. Okay? And these are gifts that the Holy Spirit manifests through you as you preach and teach the word. So allow the Holy Spirit to move in you, move through you to preach the gospel. Glory to God. So I'm gonna pray. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to come upon you, but also I'm going to ask that I'm going to give you an altar call. First, I'll give you the altar call, okay? Rom- if you would like to give, if, you know, what's that? if you would like to receive the gift of salvation that God has for you today, say this after me. For the Bible says, you know, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confess is made unto salvation. So repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me. Cleanse me. Set me free. Jesus, thank you that you died for me. I believe you're risen from the dead. You're coming back again for me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost and a hunger for the things of God. I feel the Holy Spirit. In a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am saved. I am born again. And I'm forgiven because I have Jesus Christ in my heart. And I'm my way to heaven. So if you say that prayer, you you gave your life to Jesus Christ. Your sins are washed away. And you are a new creature, new creation. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'll just ask that you baptize people afresh with the Holy Ghost and fire. Lord, let the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet in Jesus' name. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon them. Bless them, Father. Bless them financially. Bless them with jobs. Bless them with homes. Bless them with every desire of their heart. Lord, Baptize them afresh with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Burn every sickness and disease. Burn every infirmity. Burn every demonic power off of them. In Jesus' name. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to And Father, I also pray this last prayer. That today, that as the Holy Spirit come upon them, that you use every vessel. You use everyone here under the time of us to go out and reach the lost. That you use them to minister the gospel to their friends, to their family, to their loved one. Father, use their hands, use their feet, use their mouth. Lord, move upon their heart to talk to their friends about Jesus Christ. Move upon their heart to talk to their workers, your enemies, anyone about Jesus Christ. This day, this week, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So again, thank you for joining. God bless you. God love you. Okay, please. Okay, let people know about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ loved them. He loves you too, okay? If you just gave your life to Jesus Christ, go out there and let your neighbors, let your friends, let your family, let all the people of the world know that Jesus Christ died for them too. Not just for you, but for them too. Whether Whatever color they are, whatever region you are, let them know Jesus Christ loved them and has a plan for them. God bless you. God love you. Have a blessed day. Glory to God. Hallelujah.